Well, time to check on the video. Okay. Uh, what the fu- now, before I continue with the actual video, I wanted to say thank you everyone for all your support and comments. I was really not expecting the video to get so much traction, as I made the video just for fun and it was my first time editing ever. I wasn't planning on making any more videos, but the comment section really got me inspired to start making more videos, so what better to do than make a guide on how to efficiently and effectively S-rank each boss in the game? Now, as you might have been already able to tell from the title of the video, this isn't going to be an order from Al 1 to 4, and that's because I wanted to tackle the bosses that some people in the comments of my previous video mentioned were harder than I was leading them on to be. And I might as well start with the bosses people actually have problems with, rather than a boss like Gubbia the Grande. Anyways, I wanted to start with Phantom Express, because it's a boss that could be difficult if you aren't as experienced, but with this guide and the tips and tricks I go over, hopefully it becomes much easier for everyone. Now let's get into the video. Now you might be wanting to go straight in headfirst into this fight, but just one second Jimbo, you gotta be prepared before you go in. The loadout I recommend everyone use is as follows. For shot A, Converge is a godsend for phase 1 of this fight. It literally makes it as easy as holding your weapon lock button and shooting to get past this first phase. And of course, you just need to jump and parry the ping ingots that fall from time to time. Now your second shot could vary, but I found bringing crack shot was best for me. Crackshot's versatility to do burst damage and to also serve as a homing attack makes it very good for many boss fights, and it makes it probably the best shot in my opinion. Weapon tier list soon, hmm? For this boss, it makes the flying pumpkins and ghosts during the third phase super easy to deal with by just shooting them from afar so they don't drop anything to move the cart. And when you're not shooting the pumpkins, it's perfectly viable to aim your shot at the current boss in order to do more uncracked damage. Another naturally good shot here is spread. It's higher DPS than other shots if every shot hits, lets you shred bosses, but I figured it's quite overkill for this boss. The time requirement is not a problem in the slightest, and the perks that Converge and Crackshot give you outweigh the DPS spread can push out. Now for your super art, I would recommend Invincibility. It makes the last phase much easier to go through, and you don't really need Energy Beam. Other than just being unnecessary, you will be fine just spamming EX attacks instead, and then near the end saving up your cards to get your invincibility super. Speaking of saving up cards, I would say using coffee as your charm is pretty good here. Now you might have expected me to say heart ring, which is 100% true, but I thought people wouldn't want me to just constantly say a heart ring for every boss, since let's be honest it would be good for 90% of the bosses. So I kind of decided to do these guides with as little help from heart ring as possible. So with that, coffee is a good choice so you can spam EX shots and easily save up to get your super art for the last phase. Another option here is parry sugar if you have trouble parrying the pink ingots or skulls during the fight. Not very necessary, but I mean this boss fight has a lot of parries, so naturally parry sugar has a clear purpose here. Now that we're done with setting up our loadout, let's get into how to S rank this boss. A brawl in German groups. A bomb. When you enter the boss fight, immediately hold the weapon lock button and the shoot button before you actually start. This allows your converged shot, which you should equip as your shot A, to immediately start dealing full damage and get to an early start to the fight. You'll notice that the eyes aren't even appearing during his shooting animation, and that's because you are literally destroying them before they can even get out. This is why Converge absolutely destroys this first phase, and you should have zero problems with the eyes during this phase. Sometimes an eyeball might not get destroyed immediately, but don't worry, because it will just fall again into your shooting path and then get destroyed. Now you still need to be careful about the ping ingots dropping from the sky, but it's as easy as just jumping and spamming your jump button in order to parry them. Doing this doesn't really mess with the eyeballs coming towards you, as long as you start holding weapon lock and shooting again, the eyeballs should be destroyed before they can even reach you and harm you. If you're using coffee, I would recommend spamming your EX shot once you reach around 3 cards. This will definitely speed up your time to defeat each phase, and in the case for the first phase, spamming the converge EX shot is great here, and you should defeat this phase in an average of 15 seconds. Now for the second phase, I would recommend using just crack shot. There's very little reason to complicate your button presses and constantly switch between converge and crack shot for this phase, because you will be using crack shot for the majority of it anyways. So at the beginning, the conductor's head always appears in the middle, which yeah, probably everyone knows that, so just use crack shot and aim up. Now what you should do if a flying pumpkin appears is just move slightly away from the head so the shot doesn't accidentally hit the head, and shoot in the direction of the pumpkin, typically while holding the weapon lock button in order to not run off the platform. Typically, you don't even need a move, so it can be as simple as just aiming diagonally to the right or left, and you should just shoot the pumpkin down before it gets close enough to the cart. Speaking of the cart, did you know that you don't even need to move the cart when the head of the conductor moves? Yeah, you can just stand at the edge of the side where the head is, and the hands will completely miss you, so there is no need to move the cart itself. So you kind of just rinse and repeat aiming at the head shooting, and then aiming at the direction the pumpkin comes for a second, and that's pretty much this phase done. You should defeat this phase in an average of 25 seconds, I would say. 
Now right after you defeat the second phase, move your cart to the left or right side of the stage. It doesn't matter. When the lollipop ghouls pop out, immediately start jumping and shooting with whatever shot you want to use. This will allow more immediate damage and more projectiles to hit if you're using a shot like Converge or Spread. You'll get a few seconds before one of the ghouls does their lightning attack. If the ghoul you're not attacking does the lightning attack, good! Just keep on shooting the ghoul you're at and they should go down before or right when the other ghoul's lightning attack is over. Move your cart to the other side of the screen ASAP so you can attack the other ghoul. You have around 5 seconds or so before they make their lightning attack again, so you need to get there before that happens. If the ghoul you're attacking does the lightning attack, just stick to the edge of the screen and the attack will not hit you. Also, hold the weapon lock button, aim diagonally, and shoot your weapon so you can still do some damage to the ghoul, but mainly to shoot the ghosts before they make it to your cart and potentially move it. In my experience, the pink skulls that the ghosts dropped just barely missed the cart when I did this, so you should be fine as well. Speaking of which, try to get the rest of your parries during the beginning of this phase since you should have gotten at least two parries during the first phase. Now the ghoul should die shortly after the end of its lightning attack. Now if at the beginning of this phase the ghoul you initially moved your cart to does the lightning attack, after defeating it, do not immediately move your cart to the other ghoul. The other ghoul will typically attack right after you defeat the first one, so if you were to move your cart immediately, you would be in danger of getting hit by a lightning attack. Be patient and use your crack shot to deal with the ghost and to deal some damage to the ghoul while it's attacking. Make sure that after you defeat one of the two ghouls that you save your cards up to have super for the last phase. With coffee, you should have more than enough time after the first ghoul is taken down to have super, but if you're not using coffee, it could be safer to not use any EXs or minimal EX shots during this phase in order to secure your super for the last phase. When you enter the last phase, I recommend moving the cart towards the middle just because it's easier to get shots in at the head of the train. Now this phase is mostly about just not getting hit and making sure to dodge the bone ring when it comes out, but that's where the invincibility super comes in to alleviate some of the struggle. When you parry the train's tail, after a couple of seconds, you could just use your super and focus on getting as much damage as possible. But I've noticed that during the end of this phase is when people let their nerves get to them or just in general take stupid hits, so I personally try to save it for the next time I need to parry the tail or when I think I'm in danger of getting hit. But after that, it really is just about watching out for the fireballs and the bone ring that comes out from the train's nose. A tip that works for me and in general for cuphead bullet hell like sections where a lot of things are coming at you at once is I stare at the middle of the screen and let my peripheral vision see the fireballs and the bone ring falling down to dodge them. And then if I need to, look at the ping ingots falling down to parry them. Some things about the bone ring attack that some may not know is that it actually has a sound cue for when it is coming. The train makes a honking noise and shoots the bone ring out of its nose. So now if you need to, you can focus on the bone ring and make sure to dodge it. Another thing is to know how the bone ring attack actually works. When the bone ring shoots out, it falls downwards until it meets the same point where the player is on the screen. You can think of it as a graph with an X and Y axis. So when the bone ring's point on the Y axis meets the same Y axis of the player, it then starts moving horizontally across the screen. Then you can see in this clip where you hear the train's honk and the train shoots the bone ring slightly off screen. Now it's a bit hard to tell since the bone ring is off the screen, while well, I can presume the ring saw my Y axis position when I was going to parry the tail of the train, since the launching animation for the bone ring goes upwards for quite a bit before then falling down. Thus, when it met my Y axis position, it started moving horizontally in the air rather than on the ground where it first went. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing, but the bone ring just meets the player's height position and then starts coming towards you. So now that you might understand more about how the attack works, it can become more predictable and easier for you to deal with. Now before we end the video, here is a lightning round of facts and tips that I didn't mention yet. The flying pumpkins actually alternate from side to side, so if you see a pumpkin come from the left side, it will next come from the right side, and vice versa. To completely prevent the ghost skulls from moving your cart, just stop shooting until the ghost is on the cart and then destroy it so the skull then lands inside the cart and thus has zero risk of moving the cart by accident. Like how I mentioned in the last phase to look at the middle of the screen to see all the stuff coming at you, I actually found that you could instead look at the heart of the train so it is easier to see where the fireballs are going to land. On that topic, when you hear the train's honk and the bone ring comes out, not jumping or being in the air so that the bone ring will 100% go all the way to the ground could help you deal with the problem of it accidentally hitting you while in the air, since that's when you have the least control of where you are. And lastly, during the second phase, constantly aiming left and right before the head of the conductor pops up could help you preemptively deal with the flying pumpkins coming at you. Additionally, shooting a crackshot EX could help with automatically dealing with the flying pumpkins by the planet orb shooting a homing attack at them. And that's pretty much it. With all of this, you should be able to put these tips to use and be able to easily S-Rank Phantom Express, or at least be way better at beating them. Now, something to keep in mind is this was without even using Heartring. 
If you use Heart Ring, this would become 100% easier since you would have at least 2 HP extra to tank any damage before you would need a restart. You would just need to be a little bit more conservative about your cards in order to have super for the last phase, but that's really up to you. If you're really struggling with not taking damage before the last phase, I would highly recommend using Heart Ring. Well, I hope this video helped you out and I would appreciate it if you left a comment saying whether this video helped you. The next boss I plan on making a guide for is Grim Matchstick, so make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications to catch that guide. To leave us off, here's an unedited playthrough of Phantom Express utilizing the tips and tricks mentioned in the video, so I'll catch you guys in the next video. Okay, so I kind of wanted to do a live demo of, you know, S-ranking Phantom Express. So here you can see I got Converge, Crackshot, uh, Super Art 2, and Coffee. So here, we'll do it right now. Okay, immediately holding lock and shooting, so this happens. I immediately go into lock so your spread is as tight as possible, which is what we want. Shoot one, because why not? Uh, boom. Go back to position. The eyeballs will get destroyed. Parry this. Shoot supers so we don't get our art super too easily. Oh man, like, so you, we don't, don't want to have all our cards, is what I meant to say. Give me shooting the head. Pump to the right. Shoot look to the right. That was close, but we got it. Super, because why not? Or, uh, EX. I can't think super. EX, because why not? Pumpkin gets shot down. Stand to, just to the right. Won't get hit. Aim at the pumpkin. It's gonna move our thing, which is not that big of a deal. Look, we got kind of lucky there. I, I messed up, but eh, it's not that big of a deal, really. Okay. Move, pump to the right. I like to move to the right. Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna get a little greedy here. I'm gonna spam. Spam my uh, converge. I mentioned. I, I I say not to do that in the video, but uh, you know, if you if you if you want to go risky, you can. It's really up to you. But if you're prone to messing up, then that's really up to you. See, the skull barely misses the cart, so we don't have to worry about it. Boom. Now we have just about enough to get a get our super, and the coffee will fill it out. Sure, pumpkin. Yeah. Now I like to get a little greedy here, but that's just me. Uh, probably not the best idea. Got to parry this. I'm feeling pretty comfortable right now, so I'm not gonna use my super just yet. Okay, I'm gonna use it now. And now I don't even have to freaking worry about it. I can just jump in the air. And boom, there you go. I mean, literally first try, <laughs> as you can see. Uh, yeah, so I hope these tricks help you out. And I, I played most, uh, most of everything during that. It was a little scuffed, but it was literally my first try, my first recording. So, well, there you go.